Welcome to another video. I was solving an integration problem and then I realized that I have to use this theorem. But if I used it in the video, I would have to explain the theorem and then the video was going to get too long and distract from the main problem I was solving. So I decided to do this first. So I'm going to use this and then I'm going to make another video in preparation for the third video, which is the main question I'm trying to solve. So if you've never seen this before, now you've seen it. The square of a definite integral can actually be written this way. It has to be a definite integral and the square of that definite integral can be computed in this way. Now, do you need to do this? No, because once you found the integral, you can just square your answer and then you're done. But sometimes this is very difficult, complicated or impossible at the time you're doing it. And the alternative way is to rewrite it this way. And then you might do some manipulations, change the form and be able to answer it. So this video is just going to introduce this theorem that I think this was established by Fubini. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. I'm still doing research on it. I'm not really sure who put this together, but I always like to know who did the work. But at this point, I just want to show you that if I integrate this, evaluate it, I square it, I'll get the same answer as if I did the double integral. Don't let the double integral scare you. It's just a series of steps you're going to repeat. It's just the same thing you did before. You're going to do it again. Just know what you're doing. Let's get into the video. So let's start with what we know. What we know is that we can integrate this expression. So we're going to do it. We just want to show that it's the same thing as the right hand side. So if we integrate this expression, we're going to have the integral from minus one to two of x dx squared. If we square this will be equal to if I integrate this, it's going to be x squared over two evaluated from minus one to two. And I need to square that answer. Well, I know this is going to be the same thing as if I put two here, it's going to be four over two minus. If I put minus one here, it's going to be one over two. And I need to square this, right? Well, this is equal to four minus one. That gives me three over two all squared. And my answer is nine over four. So this means that I should get nine over four if I take this double integral. So let's just take the double integral. So what does this mean? This simply means because I am integrating with respect to X and with respect to Y, how does this work? So this is the case. How did this become this? So this is what you say. We want to get this integral. Let's say I is equal to the integral from minus one to two of X DX. Okay. Because this is a definite integral, it does not matter what variable I am using. I could actually say that this i is also equal to the integral from negative 1 to 2 of y dy. Because if I integrate this, I'll get i. If I integrate this, I'll get i because I'm integrating. Can you see that you get the same value because it's the same integration you're doing? Okay. What if we multiply both of them? together. If I multiply both of them, I'm going to have I squared will be the product of this and the product of this. I squared is this squared. So what I'm going to have is going to be the integral from minus one to two of X DX multiplied by the integral from minus one to two of y dy. And this theorem clearly says if you have the same boundaries and you have this kind of expression, you can as well say this is equal to the double integral. Well, if you haven't taken Calc 3, maybe this will be new, but we need to use this. Okay, minus to 2 of, you do it again, minus 1 to 2 of you, the product x times y and then you have dx dy. 
Now by Fubini, it doesn't matter if you do dy dx or dx dy. It doesn't matter in this case. Okay, in any case, dx dy can be reversed. You just need to do one before the other. You just need to switch this. So this is what we have and that is the theorem that's here. How do you evaluate this? It's so simple. This is the same thing as the integral from minus one to two because dx is closer to the inside. We're going to assume everything else is constant except x. So you're gonna treat y as a constant and leave this dy also alone. You just wanna differentiate, I mean integrate x with dx. Okay, so we're gonna keep this like this and we're going to treat this as a constant. And if you can treat this as a constant, you might as well move it to the back. Since it's a constant for this integration we're about to do, and then you're gonna have x dx. And whatever you get here is gonna be dy. It depends on how you wanna write it. You can put this in parentheses or just leave it like this. So I can integrate this now, okay? I don't wanna put parentheses, just look at it that way. I'm integrating this. And remember that we already did this integration here, three over two, okay? So I'm gonna save time and say this is gonna be x squared over two. We're gonna plug in these values and we're gonna get three over two. So this continues to be i squared continues to be the integral from minus one to two of, this is three over two times y. So that's gonna be three over two y. And this is all gone. So everything here gives us three halves. Okay, so we're gonna have three halves of y dy. We got this three halves before, here, right here, before we squared it. So now we're gonna do the integration again. And this is gonna be, we're gonna take out three over two, put it behind, and then we integrate negative one to two of y dy. Well, it's gonna give us the same thing. We just changed the letters. So this is gonna be three over two, times three over two. Well, gives us nine over four. Now this is always true, always true, always true. And we're gonna use this. Now, should you do this? The answer is no. So why, why are we learning it? You're learning it because there's gonna be a function you cannot integrate just the way we just integrated it. It is better for you to transform it into something like this and get your answer. You have to transform it into something like this. And then this makes sense. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.